then uh, I would invite Daniela from Italy um, if you're ready to start with your presentation. And you can ask questions in the chat and I will um, ask them to you afterwards as well. Okay. Can you hear me now? It's it's fine. It's very good. Okay. So, uh, hello to everyone. It's uh, really nice to have so many people at this uh, webinar. I just want to introduce uh, uh, me briefly. I'm Daniela Cucurullo, and uh, I'm an Italian. Uh, I'm an Italian teacher. I teach English and uh, multimedia in a secondary school in uh, Naples and also at the University of Naples. I've been part of this uh, wonderful project that is the Creative Classroom Lab project uh, for uh, two years and uh, we have just ended it. And um, I uh, had the experience of uh, different scenarios in my classroom and I've been, uh, I'm so glad that I have been invited to uh, present some of uh, the results of what I have realized with my students in the classroom with the scenario collaboration and assessment. Um, I am sharing a PowerPoint presentation and that's why to have you focus on what I'm introducing, I think that it is better to switch off my, my webcam and uh, I'll um, switch it on again at the end of my presentation during the discussion time, okay? So, uh, collaboration and uh, assessment is one of uh, the scenarios the Italian uh, group uh, decided to, um, to introduce in uh, the classroom. The word collaboration is uh, uh, very important and uh, we could ask why. Uh, first of all, uh, I think that uh, the collaboration uh, is one of the four key words uh, in the 21st uh, century skills. Uh, the 21st, uh, 20, mm, 21 um, century uh, skills is something that you can hear everywhere in every proposal. But we re really now have to understand what do we mean for uh, collaboration. Collaboration is something that is uh, working uh, together and with our students is uh, a way uh, to, to adopt a different way, a uh, different habit of uh, uh, working with, uh, working in a team, working in a group, working with other students. Uh, together with uh, the, the skill of the 21st century uh, collaboration, we have some, uh, some others that are implied in what we realize inside the classroom. But I want to switch the focus from the 21st century skills to something different, that is the 21st century literacies. The concept of literacy is implied in what we did during our um, uh, experimentation because we, did, we not only tried to develop basic literacy such as reading and writing, but also to promote media literacy, information literacy, network literacy, global literacy and uh, most of all digital citizenship. These are, of course, the literacies in a wide and broad sense, but we tried to, um, to use uh, as much as possible uh, all the suggestions that came from the coordinators of this project uh, to enhance the, the acquisition, the development of some of these literacies in our uh, students. What do you say? So collaboration on one side, a sort of literacies in the other side, all together make what I call, the what people call nowadays, the fluency. The fluency is a new concept that was introduced by um, uh, experts, especially um, a group of um, the 21st century project for the, the development of the global digital citizenship to promote something that was uh, uh, fit for our, um, uh, nowadays, for our students, for people in general. Among these fluencies, you can see collaboration. So, um, this is the project and it is referred in the Global Digital Citizen Project. So, 
what we did, uh, what uh, I tried to do inside my classroom, we tried to uh, recognize the concept of uh, collaboration as uh, one of the most important suggestions and uh, um, proposals that came from uh, the uh, um, European Commission, but also from uh, the political uh, um, experts, because it is one uh, of the things that um, enable our students to be citizens of Europe. And so we decided to adopt this word, uh, this way of working inside a classroom uh, as our main uh, reference scenario. Uh, the fluency is, uh, as you can see in the definition of the project, something more than a simple skill and something more than a simple literacy. It is the ability to express yourself readily and effortlessly. It is uh, not about technical prowess. It is critical thinking skill, and it is essential for our living in this multimedia world. And uh, uh, the definition is really pregnant because it say it's really significant because it says to be literate means to have knowledge or competence. To be fluent is something a little more. It is to demonstrate mastery and to do so unconsciously and smoothly. This was my point of reference, my framework of reference in adopting the, the scenario. Uh, and here, if you want to go deeper into the suggestions that come from the concept of fluency, you can have a link to this project. But let's go back to our scenario and our Creating Classroom Lab. We had to implement a framework, and I have always um, grasped a, a just a screenshot of what collaboration and teamwork means. Collaboration is when we wanted our students to organize themselves into groups or into teams. They want them to discuss the challenge of the teacher is setting to them and negotiate and negotiate. They wanted them to plan how to shape their team tasks. We wanted them to, to ask questions and to improve given tasks. We wanted them also inside this teamwork to personalize their tasks according to their multiple styles, intelligences, and so on. So students were invited to work in a team at school and extra school because we really, uh, I really think that it's so important to mix what is uh, the formal education with the informal education and to share findings also in a virtual um, environment. They had to develop uh, their individual uh, inside a teamwork, mapping their findings, uh, creating mind maps, uh, sharing them online, uh, engaging open dialogues, uh, and uh, sharing uh, results with peers uh, inside the process. How could we do all these things? Well, we started with a brainstorming activities following the idea of the, the collaboration fluency uh, suggested through the five years. And we wanted them to establish, this is my classroom, we wanted them to establish that the collective and determine the best role for each team member by pinpointing each team member's personal strengths and expertise. We try to establish norms and to sign a group contract to indicate that they were involved both in a collective working agreement and also in an acceptance of individual responsibilities and accountability of each team member. We wanted also to envision the outcome, examine the issues, the challenge and the goal as a group. We wanted to engineer a workable plan to achieve the goal and to execute by putting the plan into action and managing the process. And last but not least, we wanted to examine the process and the end results for areas of constructive improvement. We started working. The first thing I tried to, uh, to do was to implement an online virtual environment because I wanted my students at the place where um, anytime, anywhere see classroom activities, where to get feedback from other students, where they, where they could carry and view resources everywhere they were, and to view every student's progress just in one place and 
extend the reach behind the classroom. So I implemented this very friendly uh, virtual environment that is Edmodo. So we had both a class uh, inside the school and we also started a virtual class online so that the, the activities could go on um, outside uh, the, the school time. Once implemented this virtual environment, I tried to um, exploit uh, through the use of tablets uh, as many uh, web tools, uh, 2.0 web tools as possible because um, uh, each tool could be uh, useful for each activity. This line uh, that is a, a place where you have uh, like the one you are experimenting uh, now with uh, the MOOC um, uh, tablet is something where you can post your uh, sticky notes and you can post multimedia uh, files such as uh, images or videos or text or files, whatever you want. And this is very Useful. As you see, I tried to uh, screenshot some pictures of some of the work uh, done inside the classroom because we had uh, at the beginning the, um, uh, the need to brainstorm ideas, uh, to collect ideas and to, project, uh, to, to start a project together with the whole classroom. Another possible way was a Poplet. A Poplet was uh, the one we used to, um, to collect and map our ideas. After brainstorming um, suggestions, we tried to put everything in the right place and to assign to each student his own or her own um, task inside the group. Well, um, after this, students started working and while working they had the need to write. Uh, one of the best web tools that is uh, for, sharing and, uh, um, uh, for sharing ideas and for sharing uh, also uh, writing tasks is uh, a wiki. A wiki is a sort of uh, edu hub where you can share information uh, wherever you are and uh, with the, whoever you want uh, once of course uh, um, uh, being accepted, uh, having been accepted accepted by the, the teacher who is the administrator of the course. So first of all we brainstorming ideas, then we try to map them, then we started to work on the collaborative project and we had the necessity um, to write something for this project and this was the tool we found really useful. Also the discussion. Discussion was really important. For this reason I started a box of pop uh, activity and a box of pop class because uh, through this learning tool we could have a sort of talk group in a virtual environment and it's very easy to use. The, um, the result is uh, like uh, the script of a video when everything can add his or her own opinion and share or discuss it or compare it with the other students in the classroom. So uh, these were the, the tools um, that were um, used during the, the, the process um, just to collect ideas, to write ideas and to start working on the given task. Uh, one uh, just a very um, uh, quick reference is that I started this project with my classroom in, uh, in the fifth year of a technical institute where students have uh, to study um, specific subjects in English. We call it CLEAL, that is Content and Language Integrated Learning. And so my students of electronics and electrotechnics had to study uh, some specific uh, contents in, uh, in English in order to prepare themselves for the final exam. So they had to, uh, to work together um, 
at a project that has to be uh, shown uh, during uh, the final uh, exam, uh, during the exam. And uh, they also needed uh, not only to collect ideas, of course, uh, to uh, find resources and find contents and materials, but also to find a way to, uh, to show this uh, production uh, to, the, to the external commission. Uh, this, why, this is why I found the clock as a very useful app because with this um, uh, tool uh, they could create uh, posters online uh, adding any kind of uh, uh, multimedia uh, file. So you have a, just one place, um, uh, you have uh, I, um, pictures, you have photos, you have contents, you have uh, films, uh, videos or uh, uh, files, any kind of files. And so the whole class collected together what they have done up to, uh, to then, uh, what they had done uh, just in only one place. Of course, I try to, um, to suggest some of the possible tools, web tools that can be used in a collaborative way. But I also want to, uh, to give you the opportunity to find your own, both for an Android or an iOS system, uh, through this very useful website where you can find a tech teacher collaborative apps. And uh, these are just a few that can be used uh, to, to start to announce this kind of projects. Another very useful resource for me was uh, Learning Apps, uh, the website where you can on, not only um, test your students' knowledge and so towards moving towards the, the second phase of the scenario, that is the assessment, but you can create your own content according to what you are producing. With this website, Learning Apps, that is in different languages, you can uh, invent your own app with different kinds of um, exercises or tasks multiple choice, drag and drop, fill in the blanks, matching pictures and so on. And I found this very useful because once I realized the project work, students tried, started to test and to check what they had done um, so that they could at the same time um, check their work. Uh, do a peer, um, uh, peer con review of what are the students have done and also test the results of their production. Extra resources can also be found <laughs> In uh, this uh, Web 2.0 uh, Cool Tools for Schools, uh, where uh, you can find, uh, I'll, I'll give you the links uh, to the, the, the presentation later on, because we'll share it on uh, the website. And here you can find uh, so many uh, collaborative web tools that can, that can be used according to this uh, particular scenario. Uh, also another one, the 20 best tools for online collaboration. Uh, there is a, a very useful selection of what you can do. But uh, here we have plenty of um, materials, we have plenty of apps, we have to adopt a model of technology uh, if we want really to, to go towards what I had called before the media, the global, the digital literacy. The TS consider the classroom as a digital hub where you can use the tablet, where you can use the PC, where you can have Wi-Fi connection, you can use your smartphone for according to the bring your own device uh, philosophy. And so the class becomes a digital hub, but you can also, ha you have also to personalize what you are doing. And I, I, I found this model very um, useful, very uh, stimulating, because um, it is a model that goes from a first step of a traditional way of using and adopting technologies to a, a contemporary one. Uh, that, and so it, it goes from the familiarization to the utilization, the integration, the orientation, uh, in the, and you arrive at the 
the evolution. And um, evolution is uh, the, the, the top of the uh, technology adoption where uh, students are really um, fluent in uh, what they are doing inside the classroom with their tablets. So what I say is that uh, if I want to enhance a collaborative process, if I want to, uh, to start using apps, if I want to have my students um, uh, learn uh, through tablets, I also have to consider how uh, um, uh, I can introduce uh, all of these technologies step by step, uh, having a framework of uh, reference for each step that um, makes uh, me uh, change uh, the, the situation of a normal learning environment where uh, the technologies are integrated to something that is different. And for this, I, I try to uh, adopt the model of integration between the, what is the formal situation, the learning environment as the school is, to what comes from from my students, that is the way of their formal learning. This is uh, the only possible way that we have uh, to change what is a simple physical space into uh, something that is a teaching and learning place. The, the shift from the two words is very significant because it implies that students are living what they are doing and they are really fluent in doing that. That's why I also uh, suggest any time I adopt a, a scenario or a new scenario and I want to introduce the use of different apps that uh, if you want to really teach in a gradual and uh, efficient way, we have to go um, following uh, the Bloom's taxonomy that is uh, in this feature revised with the use of uh, technologies. So we have to start with the, the remembering phase to have students understand what then they have to apply what they are st studying, they have to analyze, they have to evaluate, and then they can also create. And uh, this is uh, the, the last, the, the, the top of um, the, um, the scale where you can uh, evolve towards the evolution of and the use of technologies. With each of these different steps, you have some particular apps or web tools. Some of them have been really mentioned by me and some others can be found in the extra resources but the important thing is that you expect what is going on uh, step by step in a gradual way. Another possible solution is uh, this uh, um, framework I have adopted uh, to, um, this is for iPads, but you can also find the same apps for Android. You can have a step by step other possible um, tech tools and tech apps. Another one is this. I say at the beginning that I wanted my students divided themselves into different roles according to this style to their multiple intelligences. So how can I choose the right app for each personal intelligence? I have different examples for each of them and so according to the, uh, the needs um, of the, each student inside the team, inside the group, I could suggest one of the other. One, uh, is, uh, the last but not least, is the mixture of skills and literacies towards the concept of fluency I introduced at the beginning. For each of the literacies, you can have a selection of different apps. And uh, this framework can also be adopted inside the classroom. Once done all this work, of course, we had to consider the second um, the second uh, step, the second phase of our scenario, that is the assessment phase. Assess how can I assess collaborative skills? I had students work in a team. I had students work in a group. I also had students perform individual tasks. How can I enhance the assessment skills? Of course, I had to adopt grids uh, as a teacher to consider some uh, individual 
project inside uh, the, the team. I had to consider the teamwork. I also had to consider the process and not also uh, the products of my students. But I also wanted that each student enacted a sort of peer review each other, considering the work done by others, because all together um, had to collaborate to a final product. So we adopted, I adopted some grids with my students just to, to check their progress uh, to, uh, during uh, the process, but also to evaluate the products they had realized at the end of each phase. I also shared with them this grid and um, we agreed on formulating them uh, together, but also asking the students uh, to give uh, the personal feedback to other people uh, working together in a team. Uh, all uh, these uh, grids are, um, can be found in uh, the scenario uh, resource uh, bank, and so you can uh, see how we developed. I don't want to go deeper inside them, but you can see adopt for each uh, step of the scenario a different way of uh, working and assessing from the student's part or the, the teacher's part of also from um, the uh, uh, experts outside the, the group. How could I uh, prepare these grids with my students? Well, I have selected the three best uh, rubric makers that you can find online. The first one is Rubric for Teachers. Uh, it's a website that offers a lot of pre-made rubrics that cover a variety of subjects and they are available for use. You can adopt them as they, uh, they have already been done, but you can also edit each rubric according to your own uh, needs. You can share what you are doing and you can also uh, change your ideas and uh, uh, modify uh, some of the um, columns or some of the boxes inside the grid. So uh, this is the first one that is really useful uh, to, to prepare and uh, to develop your own um, assessment grids in, um, according to the different works you are doing. Then there is another one that is I rubrics or value for rubrics, where you can build your own rubrics, you can assess, but you can also share and collaborate. And what is important in this other website that you can have your students check the progress they are doing in a sort of gamification progress because students like to be um, appreciated. They want to know if something they have done is uh, highly recognized or no, uh, or not, and they enhance the mechanism of a game. So, because they want to to go um, to the other step, to the other level, and to want to pass uh, the, the, the 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 module, and then you can also um, have in the, with this website your own virtual class, uh, and so you can act in a collaborative way to assess um, rubrics with the, the group but also to have uh, the, the process, the whole process um, built inside uh, your own uh, cloud, as you can say, in your own virtual environment and uh, monitor what is going on. Last but not least, the other one is Rubistar. Uh, it's, a, um, it's a pity I can uh, uh, open the, the website and want to, uh, to, to, um, to take so much time, but uh, I just want you to suggest that um, you can uh, create your own uh, rubrics uh, with the different activities and different tasks. Uh, for uh, each of these, um, uh, sections and categories, you can find uh, different possibilities. Uh, so once uh, selected the category, you can uh, prepare your own grid uh, using some uh, already made uh, grids, but also changing them and adding a new, uh, new template. And I found this really useful because I uh, shared this with my students. I had them prepare their own and uh, comparing with uh, the ones 
prepared by their classmates and uh, agreeing on uh, the last uh, and more efficient product at the ending of uh, the discussion and of the sharing. And so um, my students could uh, check their uh, progress and also could collaborate in checking the whole team progress. So collaboration assessment uh, suggested some apps to collaborate inside the classroom, in not the apps for the app's sake, but a um, reasonable and uh, um, accepted uh, selection of apps according to the different intelligence styles and the different steps of a teaching learning process. Once done all this, I had to arrive at the end of my uh, path, and uh, for this I adopted again the fluency snapshot for uh, the collaboration um, fluency um, and the tears agreed that uh, uh, allowed me uh, to, to evaluate now after assessing also evaluating how different would be uh, the, um, the, the, the participation of each student but also the participation of all the students as a group. So uh, just to, to read one of the most important uh, um, sentences referring, inserted in this creed uh, is uh, um, the possibility to demonstrate proficiencies in personal, in managing a personal relationship or using various means to uh, manage conflict, to understand creative process through collaboration, through the exchange of ideas and building on the achievements of others, or show sensitivity to issues and processes associated with collaborating across cultures, and also the last one also revisit, reflects critically on and revising the process and the product at each stage. And this was the, what was I meant at the beginning of my implementation of this um, second year scenario, collaboration and assessment, because I all um, I wanted uh, to change what was a simple classroom in uh, a, a personal classroom environment when all the students uh, could uh, feel themselves as being part of a group and uh, so that to promote what I said at the beginning of my uh, presentation to promote and enhance uh, the, the development of all the different literacies. And uh, so that's all. Uh, I want to thank you for your kind uh, attention and uh, uh, stay in tune uh, just uh, for the end of the presentation to, to answer your questions. Thank you very much. Elena, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. I'm sorry, I just had a problem with my internet connection. I should be back now. Okay. Uh, thank you very much for your presentation. Um, I didn't have a lot of questions in the chat. And uh, I'm not sure if you are able to answer that one. One question was, uh, why are they called rubrics? Do you happen to know that? Sorry, can you say that again? The name, why is it called rubrics? But uh, if you don't know, I know it's a bit of a specific question. Uh, no, it is a rubric is something that you adopt uh, as a grid uh, to, to choose some different, uh, um, how can I say, uh, some different, uh, we say, indicators. Uh, I can give an example of uh, a rubric. Uh, if you want it, I can share my PC, my desktop. 
Um, I would suggest, because of the time that we move on, do you have a link maybe as well? Uh, well, of course, uh, I have the, the Rubister link, uh, and I wanted to open it, uh, but uh, I didn't because I think that uh, uh, I took so, so, uh, too much time for this. Uh, well, um, it is the, the heading on a document uh, and with the direction of what you have to, to assess, to what you have to, to judge or evaluate. So it's a sort of grid and with different headings, uh, for example, participation inside the classroom, relationship with other people and so on. And then you have to, uh, to go deeper inside it and give a detailed description. All together, the grid with the, the headings uh, on the left hand side and the description of the right hand side with the different values that can be numbers or uh, uh, just words. Uh, all together is called and uh, a rubric. Thank you very much. Uh, Wolfgang, are you ready? Yes. Yeah. You can hear me? Yes, perfect. Thank you again, Daniela. Okay, you're welcome. Okay, thank you very much, Daniela, for the interesting and basic theoretical overview and uh, information about useful apps. Now let's have a look how it could look in, an, in the school, in, in the real school situation. <clears throat> about me, that's me, I'm teaching German, geography, German language, office of the Multimate and some web two zero tools. I'm also the e-learning coordinator of the school. I'm responsible for the learning management system. I'm IT administrator and since 2003 I'm working with laptop classes. So our school, just to have an imagination, it's a college for higher vocational education, a commercial academy. It contains uh, professional training in alpine skiing, snowboarding, cross-country skiing and biathlon added to commercial qualifications. To know, to, to understand the situation, it's good to know that normally the students work five to six hours per lesson and two to three hours per day training. So they have not really much time uh, besides school. So what I made the first year, it's just, you see the setting, it's the first grade class. There are 30 students, 30 to 14 years. We built nine groups. We have 10 surface tablets provided by school and bring your own smartphones and laptops. From the second grade on, normally our students have laptops and we have laptop classes. So what, did, what was the task about collaboration? The task was to create ebooks about different topics of globalization. They used laptops, tablets and smartphones. And the learning story, you saw it before, uh, theoretically, is very simple. You organize groups, you organize themselves. They choose one topic of globalization, it was mobile phones or chocolate or jeans or oil. They have to find information and map it. Then they have to get the teacher's remarks on the content and structure. Then they write the text for the ebook. They design the ebook. It was uh, it's an ebook that is implemented in our learning management system. They ask questions to the pages. Then they presented the ebook before the class and then they assess others ebooks. So this is a typical classroom situation. You see laptops, smartphones, <coughs> and also tablets. We had some, uh, uh, okay. So our collaboration tool is the learning management system. It's LMS AT. It's a, it's a tool that is provided by the government. It's a very, uh, very powerful tool. You can organize schools. You can organize classes. You can organize the subjects. And in your subjects, you have this a kind of uh, library. And for our project, I gave one library uh, folder globalization. Each group had its own uh, library, and I give uh, some kind of uh, useful information for the students to work. So this was the library from one group. They they just. Uh, Store their, their uh, documents, the files, their, their links, just to work on the on the ebook. 
So this is one result. This was example was oil. So and all groups had first to work on statistics about their topic, about raw materials processing and where they where they're coming from, the production process, points of criticism, some alternatives, for example, oil, and then what can I do? So in this ebook, you see they have some kind of a, a table of, of content. And each each page was filled with text, with photos, with videos. It's very easy to in implement the videos there. And on the bottom, they have to make one kind of question about the topic. So for the assessment, basically, some some questions that you have to to, to see. The first is who assesses what? Is it the teacher? Are the students of the group who assesses themselves? are the students of the class who assess the other students. But for all this, one very, very important to teach is the ultimate responsible for the grade. Difficulty which uh, will arise is assessment for group work in case of a lot of groups, so in, my, in my opinion, about 30 students, nine groups, or if some or a lot of work has been done outside the school. So how can they see what they're doing and who is working and, and, and what they're working on? One point of the assessment is where do you lie the focus on? Is it the outcome? Is it more the working process? Is it the, the text? You see before some, some kind of concept with the, with the, who Daniela shows, and you have hundreds of concepts on there. So it's best to find your own and, and to make it not too, too complex. So if you have 30 students and make 30 sheets to, to to assess them, it's, uh, it's a lot of work. So for my ebook assessment, I have my own criteria. It was about the assessment criteria, the quantity, how much pages they made, the text it was very, very important for me, the structure, relevance of the content, how clear was the, was the, in, was the topic. I really, for me, it's very important that they, that they quote the sources, where you have the material, which kind of media? It's a good photos. Are the are the pictures saying something? Is the, are the videos really good ones? The questions about the topic and the ebook design. So it's this 24, 22 points is along only the text. Five points is how to how to make the ebook, the design of the ebook. A little bit the social behavior and another kind kind of points just coming from other students by this assessment. So this is a Excel sheet. So it's my, this is my rubrics. You just see the points and and how much they get. And I show the students then because they have some questions why did I get get five points and other four and then I can do and I can explain then it. A seven sheet for for the students. So they had to to assess each each group and to give them one to six points and then I had to add, to write about something. Uh, I liked very much, and, and, and this was very interesting because if students assess, it's not so much far away from the assess from, from teachers. I made also so why how students would like to, to assess that, or how much is the percentage rating. The first group, it was this, this uh, project, it was about more or less 70% the project and the content. And only 11 percent of the, the students self-assess, and another one was the last project. So it was about only 40 percent for content and product, 30 percent how the teacher sees the, the working process, and sometimes it's really, really hard to see this. And 30 percent was the students by themselves to give uh, some assess for the working process. So some remarks because I'm. I'm Normally, I'm, I'm working with laptops, and only our first grade has now sharing with, with a little bit with, with tablets. So one thing is, is as a joke of a teacher, for all is mobile devices are very helpful in collaboration processes. Work. So you can really do a lot of things. The students can get more information from different sources. Normally, they have the textbook to two or three quotes, and then and then make something about it from that. And that's not really that's not really good. Another really good uh, point is that the students have more possibilities to present their work. 
and maybe to raise a little bit of creativity. Uh, it should be mentioned that, that I don't like to work with too much different tools and apps because students, it's good that students uh, come on with one app and, and, to, and to work with that or with two or three, three but not, not too much more. Also, if you have more teachers in, in, in school who are working with, with laptops or with tablets, it should be, should be clear what, what apps you are using that, that students really get them confused with, with apps and, and with platforms and, and, and the other things. What's really teaching and learning can make more fun. Teaching can also be much more uh, complicated and, and, and not so. Okay, but I really saw it for collaboration projects in the classroom. You normally need a lot of time. You saw it in the last course in the in the in the course two that with the with the learning with the learning story. So if you're going to higher grades, it's, you are more focused on the on the topic than on 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 or, or other things around. So for my project, just to say, we need about. 50 to 20 lessons, and that is really a lot just to, for, for one topic. So I didn't use apps and tools for assessment, so this Excel sheet. What I not think is that for self-assessment, Padlet is, is a very good tool, also for a group, if a group, a group has a Padlet, or just to, to, to give some remarks. For our uh, learning system, I can I can give them some, some points and I can give uh, remarks. But if I would give remarks to 30 students, it would it would be a long time only for giving remarks. Okay, that's that's uh, the project and um, some kind of assessment and and collaboration. I show a short movie. I think we have the time to what the students have. Done. So I have ideas. So just a moment. Just. Um, So here we go. So this was the classroom situation. Uh, my students are allowed to listen to music if they're working. And with the surface tablets with uh, keyboards. So this was, was a time schedule. It's about yeah, 20, 16 hours work. This is a page of this ebook. So that you can, can build in. Wait, okay, wait. thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Wolfgang. We have uh, one question in the chat. 
And the question is, uh, what do you do if you do not have a lot of time? Is it still possible to do a collaboration project? It depends how much how much how's your course in your in your in, in your in your, in your teaching and in, in your subject. Your subjects where you really uh, very strict with with with, uh, with the topics. For instance, in, in Austria, if you have not going to Central Madura, you really have to do this, this, and this, this, this topic. In geography, you cannot move a little bit because when it's in the curriculum, is said globalization has much more time to 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 divide it and and to do other things in, in this. But if you have really strict strict uh, curriculum, so you're not so free to to work with with the collaboration. Thank you. And another question is, uh, how did the students react to this uh, new way of working? They liked it very much because it's just just a new new way to 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 learn. Because normally in the first grade we are not working with these laptops and and with with tablets, and so it's it's very free and and just another learning environment. They liked it very much. They, they knew that they have to work a lot, but they liked it. Thank you. Are there any other questions in the chat? Then now is your moment. Um, otherwise, we will uh, soon also close the webinar. As, uh, we had two excellent presentations, and it's now close to one May hour. So say, say something. I think it's uh, one one really thing is uh, that you can really have technical problems, and if you have different devices. You must really be good in technology, otherwise you are just only having problems and don't go to the internet, my my tablet is not working and so it's really it's really hard because it it, it sometimes colleagues don't like to work with, with notebooks because they are not they cannot uh, react if there's some problem. I think this one is the most most problems in, in generally if you if you use new technology. Yes, thank you. I think uh, they reply to all questions. Um, there's another question for you, Wolfgang. I don't know if you know the answer. Um, do all teachers work in the same collaborative way? No. No, because in in our in the secondary school in, in commercial school, you have really some some curricula that are very, very, very tough. You cannot. Uh, you haven't any time to to do anything other like you like you have to do. And I've, if I see it right, uh, the problems are not bring your own device. The problems are generally uh, technology. That you have a lot of in Austria, for example, very old teachers. You are not really fit with with technology. And uh, do you have someone to take care of the technical problems? That's me. Normally, normally students. Uh, I have uh, because we have ten years now on laptops. Normally, students make it by their own because they really want to go to internet and if so, they do everything to to do with to come to the internet. And I thought that they, so by and by it's, it's easier for them to to work with the laptops or also with tablets. And I think you already replied to it. But do you think that uh, there are a lot of technical problems because of bringing your own device? No, because normally, if you have a perfect uh, working system, it's it's not a problem today. It's, it depends on 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 the on the software. Maybe we have we had a lot of problems with, with Windows 8.0, but now I think it will better with Windows 10. Thank you. And we, and we also we have we have mixed. We have really uh, MacBooks and 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 tablet and tablets and and also some laptops. That's not the problem. And uh, another question is, uh, what about homework? Do you assign homework? Normally not, because our, our students, they have six hours lessons in school and then two or three hours per day training because they're professional sports, sportsmen, sports women. So, and normally on the weekends, they have training courses and, and, and races. And so it's, I try to, that they can do everything in school. Thank you. And uh, then another question about your school vision. Like, do you have a school vision 
about education with technology? I think as, as we, we we started with this learning management management systems ten years ago, and for me the best would be we really that all teachers use the learning management system because it provides students with the, with the topics and, and with the things we have done during during lessons if they're not at school, and so they have always the overview of what they have to do. Yeah. And uh, one last question before we finish uh, from Josefina. What about students who don't care and use the internet and tools for their social sites? Normally Facebook is, is, is blocked. But on the other hand, you cannot, if you're coming with the mobile devices, uh, you cannot get just working with, with, with WhatsApp and, and anything else. And they have to learn to, to go with it. Also, sometimes they're playing games one hour during the project, but they have to to be in this way. We have to make them in this way that sometimes they have to they have to uh, a fixed timeline. They have to to finish their work at this time. And sometimes maybe it's better if this if they're just learning. If you had seen it in the video, the girl was learning Italian vocabulary. For her, would in this time it was much better to do that. And for me also, because if she's not learning, she can also not concentrate on the on the other work. Okay, thank you very much. Um, thank you again uh, to both presenters, Daniela and Wolfgang. And thank you uh, to all participants. We had uh, 93 people in the webinar. And sorry again uh, that you couldn't uh, use the chat to chat with everybody. Uh, that was not our intention. There was a problem for us to change the setting, and we will try uh, to fix it for our next webinar. And uh, see you all still on the course, and uh, have a nice evening. Bye, everybody. Just a few words, uh, Elena, if I can. Uh, it's possible to, uh, to open a follow-up discussion in the forum if people want to to share their ideas and to ask questions in the forum, it could be useful in, uh, to do that. I'm available to this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, excellent idea, Daniela. Okay, so thank you to everyone and see you on video on the, the forum, okay? Bye-bye. All right, and uh, as always, uh, the webinar materials, the recording and the presentations will be available in the section of this webinar. So you will find it back.